Okay, dear students. In the last class, we saw how the cobra and the mongoose came face to face and got ready for a fight. Okay, now let us continue. Though the combatants were unaware of my presence in the banyan tree, they soon became aware of the arrival of two other spectators. One was a miner and the other a jungle crow, not the wily urban crow. They had seen these preparations for battle and had settled on the cactus to watch the outcome. Had they been content only to watch, all would have been well with both of them. The cobra stood on the defensive, swaying slowly from side to side, trying to mesmerize the mongoose into marking a false move. But the mongoose knew the power of his opponent's glassy, unwinking eyes and refused to meet them. Instead, he fixed his gaze at a point just below the cobra's hood and opened the attack, moving forward quickly until he was just within the cobra's reach, he made a feint to one side. Immediately the cobra struck. His great hood came down so swiftly that I thought nothing could save the mongoose. But the little fellow jumped neatly to one side and darted in as swiftly as the cobra, biting the snake on the back and darting away again out of reach. The moment the cobra struck, the crow and the miner hurled themselves at him only to collide heavily in midair. Shrieking at each other, they returned to the cactus plant. A few drops of blood glistened on the cobra's back. The cobra stuck again and missed. Again, the mongoose sprang aside, jumped in and bit. Again, the birds dived at the snake, bumped into each other instead and returned shrieking to the safety of the cactus. The third round followed the same course as the first but with one dramatic difference. The crow and the miner still determined to take part in the proceedings died at the cobra but this time they missed each other as well as their mark. The miner flew on and reached its perch, but the crow tried to pull up in mid-air and turn back. In the second that it took him to do this, the cobra whipped his head back and struck with great force, his snout thudding against the crow's body. I saw the bird flung nearly 20 feet across the garden where after fluttering about for a while it lay still. The miner remained on the cactus plant very wisely refrained from interfering again. The cobra was weakening and the mongoose, walking fearlessly up to it, raised himself on his short legs and with lightning snap had the big snake by the snout. The cobra wreathed and lashed about in a frightening manner and even coiled itself about the mongoose, but all to no avail. 
the little fellow hung grimly on until the snake had ceased to struggle. He then smelt along its quivering length and gripping it around the hood, dragged it into the bushes. The miner dropped cautiously to the ground, hopped about, peered into the bushes from a safe distance and then with a shrill cry of congratulation flew away. Okay dear students, let's see what does that mean. Though the combatants, combatants means opponents. Here the opponents are the cobra and the mongoose. Though the combatants were unaware, were not knowing of my presence in the banyan tree. They did not know that I was sitting on the banyan tree. They soon became aware of the arrival of two other spectators. But they became aware of the arrival of two other spectators, spectators, viewers. So there were two viewers who had come to see the fight between the cobra and the mongoose. One was a miner. So one was a miner and the other a jungle crow. This is a jungle crow. You find that its neck is also black in color. If the neck is somewhat grayish in color, it is a urban crow. So there is a difference between a jungle crow and an urban crow. A jungle crow, not the wily urban crow. They had seen these preparations for battle. They had seen the preparations for the fight between the cobra and the mongoose and had settled on the cactus. And they came and sat down on the cactus plant to watch the outcome to watch the result of the fight. Had they been content, had they been happy only to watch, all would have been well with both of them. If they were happy only to watch the fight, everything would have been fine. But let's see, were they only happy to watch? The cobra stood on the defensive, defensive, defending the attack of the mongoose. So it was defending Pradirodhikuga. Swaying slowly from side to side. Swaying, moving slowly from side to side. Trying to mesmerize, mesmerize, capture the complete attention of someone. Sraddha Bhidichabhatuga. The mongoose into marking a false move. So the cobra was trying to get the attention of the mongoose so that the mongoose makes a false move. But the mongoose knew the power of his opponent's glassy, unwinking eyes. But the mongoose knew the power of his opponent. Who is the opponent of the mongoose? Yes, the snake, the cobra. It knew the power of its opponent's glassy, unwinking eyes, unwinking, not closed, and refused to meet them. So it refused to look into the eyes of the cobra. Cobra yude kannu vili leki no kan mangoes teyarayla. Instead, he fixed his gaze at a point just below the cobra suit. So this mongoose was gazing, means look. He was looking at a point just below the hood of the cobra and it opened the attack. It attacked the cobra. Moving forward quickly until he was just within the cobra's reach, he made a feint to one side. So what did he do? Moving quickly 
until he was just within the cobra's reach he made a feint feint is a mock attack or movement in a warfare so he made a mock attack in order to distract the enemy shatruvinde shraddha dirikkan vendi oru tetraya neekam so he made a feint to one side who is his opponent his opponent is the cobra so in order to make a false move or in order to make the cobra a fool he made a feint to one side he made a move to one side immediately the cobra struck immediately the cobra attacked the mongoose his great hood came down so swiftly that i thought nothing could save the mongoose his great hood the hood of the snake came down very swiftly swiftly quickly fastly vegathil that i thought nothing could save the mongoose and i thought nothing could save the mongoose from the bite of the snake but the little fellow who's the little fellow the mongoose he jumped to one side he neatly jumped to one side and in as swiftly as the cobra biting the snake on the back darting away again out of reach so what did the mongoose do it jumped to one side and then it came back again bit the snake on its back and darted out dart means move out again out of the reach of the snake so it went out of the reach of the snake so that the cobra doesn't attack him the moment the cobra struck the moment the cobra attacked the mongoose the crow and the mina heard themselves at him so the moment the cobra struck the moment the cobra attacked the crow and the mina heard themselves heard threw themselves they also attacked avaru maatramichu the snake only to collide collide hit against one another kooti idikkuga heavily in mid air so they hit against one another in mid air shrieking at each other shrieking shouting at each other they were angry because they were not able to attack the snake so shouting at each other they returned to the cactus plant a few drops of blood glistened on the cobra's back so on the back of the cobra a few drops of blood glistened glistened shined so blood was shining on the back of the cobra the cobra struck again the cobra attacked again and missed again the mongoose sprang aside again the mongoose jumped aside sprang means jump jumped aside jumped in so he jumped outside again he came inside and bit the snake again the bird stabbed the snake so who are the birds the mina and the crow again this crow and the mina they dived the snake bumped into each other bump hit against one another collide we have come across the word bumped collide same meaning kooti idikkuga into each other and returned shrieking to the safety of the cactus cactus and they returned shrieking shrieking shouting to the safety of the cactus plant the third round followed the same course as the first so now it was the third round of fight and the third round followed as the first but with one dramatic difference but this time there was a difference between the first and the second round the crow and the mina still determined make sure urappu velutuga the crow and the mina still determined to take part in the proceedings proceedings that is the fight 
between the mongoose and the snake dived the cobra they went to attack the cobra but this time they missed each other as well as their mark but this time the third time they did not collide with each other but also they missed their mark who is their mark the cobra they missed the cobra as well as they missed each other the mina flew on and reached its perch so the mina continued flying and reached its perch perch is an object on which a bird alights or roosts typically a branch or a horizontal bar so here where were the mina and the crow sitting they were sitting on the cactus plant so the perch here is the cactus plant but the crow tried to pull up in mid air but the crow he tried to pull he tried to stop and come back in the air in a second that it took him to do this so it took him one second to stop and turn back so in that second the cobra whipped his head whip what is a whip this is a whip you know how it is when you get beaten by this so the cobra whipped his head back so the cobra whipped his head back so the movement of the head of the cobra was just like being bit by a whip the chatavaru und adikina adhe vegadeyilana paambu talavirichirathu so struck with great force his snout this is the snout of a snake so his snout thudding against thudding hitting against the crow's body so the snout of the snake hit against the body of the crow i saw the bird flung nearly 20 feet across the garden so what did he see the bird was thrown away how many feet across the garden 20 feet across the garden where after fluttering about fluttering flapping the wings quickly and lightly so the crow was fluttering its wings for a while for some time and lay still that means the crow died the mina remained on the cactus plant so the mina now remained on the cactus plant very wisely refrain refrain stay away maru nilkuka from interfering intervene in a situation without invitation or necessity idabadal so the mina stopped interfering in the fight between the mongoose and the snake the cobra was weakening the cobra was becoming weak and weak because of the fight and walking fearlessly up to it raised himself on his short legs so now the mongoose was very courageous because it knew the snake cannot attack him so it walked fearlessly without any fear to the snake raised himself on his short legs and what did he do he raised on his short legs he raised himself on his short legs and with a lightning snap snap bite had the big snake by the snout so it took the snout of the snake that is the head of the snake in its mouth the cobra reached reached to his tail the cobra twisted and lashed about in a frightening manner frightening it was became very afraid because it now knew that it was going to die so it became frightened pedichuy and even coiled itself around the mongoose and it even coiled itself coil to tuga around the mongoose but to no avail but it was of no avail it was of no use the little fellow hung grimly on the little fellow who is the little fellow the mongoose he hung grimly on in a very serious manner 
so he stood there in a very serious manner until the snake had ceased ceased stopped to struggle that means the mongoose killed the snake he then smelt along smelt smelt means smelled he then smelled along its quivering length quivering shivering length he then smelt along its shivering length the snake was shivering because it was its last time it was going to die was, so the snake was shivering and gripping it around the hood and gripping it grip catching it around its hood around the hood hood is the head of the snake so catching it around the hood of the snake dragged it into the bushes and pulled it into the bushes the miner dropped cautiously carefully so the miner dropped very carefully to the ground and hopped about hop move by jumping on all or two of its feet at the same time so the miner jumped about peer peer means look no kuga into the bushes it looked into the bushes from a safe distance because the mongoose had taken the snake into the bushes and then with a shrill cry of congratulation a shrill sharp cry of congratulation flew away so the maina was congratulating the mongoose for killing the snake can you tell me what may be the reason why the maina was congratulating the mongoose maybe the snake had eaten away the eggs of the birds so now it has got rid of one of its enemy okay now let's look at some questions which will help you to understand the lesson how did the mongoose manage to escape from the snake's bite yes what are your answers yes what can you tell me yes the long hair on his spine had helped him to escape from the bite of the snake cobra was a good fighter pick out one of his fighting techniques so can you tell me one of the fighting techniques of the cobra the cobra stood on the defensive swaying slowly from side to side trying to mesmerize the mongoose into marking a false move okay the next question the mongoose proved that he was clever can you cite any instance of his cleverness moving forward quickly until he was just within the cobra's reach he made a feint to one side so this shows that the mongoose was clever Okay the next question what were the reactions of the spectators when the cobra struck the moment the cobra struck the crow and the maina hurled themselves at the cobra so they attacked the cobra question how did the crow push itself into trouble so how was the crow put in trouble yes the crow tried to pull up in mid air and turn back in a second that it took the crow to do this the cobra whipped his head back and struck with great force his snout thudding against the crow's body okay next why is the maina said to be wise yes why is the maina said to be wise After the death of the crow the miner decided not to interfere in the fight between the mongoose and the snake it refrained itself from interfering again okay next question who won the battle what made the miner peer into the bushes who won the battle yes the mongoose won the battle 
And what made the miner peer into the bushes? Yes, to see what happened to the cobra. Okay, dear students, let's come to activity 3 in page number 16 of your textbook. Watching the nature around us is really interesting. Each and every living being has its own characteristics. The boy in the story narrates certain features of a few animals. List them out. The squirrel, it is given for you in the textbook. The squirrel was very young. It was small and gray in color. Finding the boy not harmful, it became very friendly with him. It trusted the boy and even took food from his hands. Now we have the snake and the mongoose. Okay, so now you have to write the snake and the mongoose, the characteristics which you find in the story. Okay, I think you would have finished your work. So, now let's check what you have done. The snake. The black cobra was huge in size. What are the other things? It was skillful and experienced fighter. He could move swiftly and strike with the speed of light. So these are the characteristics of the snake. Now let's come to the mongoose. The grey mongoose is 3 feet long, clever and aggressive. It was a superb fighter. It knows the fighting techniques of the snake well. Okay, now let's have some additional questions. Who were the two spectators? Yes, very easy one. What is it? Minor. Then jungle crew. Where the two spectators? And the last one. What happened to the crow at the end? What happened to the crow at the end? It was killed by the snake. It's assignment time. You have an assignment. Narrate the fight between the cobra and the mongoose in your words. So you have to narrate in your words, not the words of the boy or the grandfather or anyone. According to what you have read the story and you have understood, you have to narrate the fight between the cobra and the mongoose. And you know what you will do, but this time the response from your side is very less. After two days, I will be telling who all should send me the answers. So all would have to do and whom I tell have to give me the answers, they would have to watch it after me. Okay, dear students, thank you and have a nice day.